Okay, today we're gonna to be dissecting the lungs. There's quite a lot to do, so you need to pay attention. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the external structure of the lungs. You'll feel them quite spongy, actually, um, and you'll notice that one side is bigger than the other. This side has had a little, the ends cut off already, but forgetting that, we can see that this side has almost three lobes to it, one, two, and three, while the other side has two. And that's because your left side of your body has to accommodate space for the heart as well. So they're a little bit long, uh, smaller on the left side. Now on this set of lungs that I've got, I've got two tubes. This one is your trachea. This is where your air is going down. And as you look down that trachea, you'll see it starts to branch into the bronchi. This one is your esophagus. And actually, if you squeeze that, or you put your finger down there, what you'll actually find is perhaps some grass or his last supper. And you'll also notice that it's really uh, closed. And that's why we need the process of peristalsis to squeeze behind the bolus of food to push it down to the stomach. In contrast, this trachea is held open by rings of cartilage. In actual fact, when you feel inside, you'll notice that they're incomplete rings of cartilage. The reason being is that this little piece here doesn't have any cartilage because when the esophagus is pushing against it, you don't want your food to feel like it's going bump, 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 bump as you swallow it down your esophagus. Okay, now just for fun, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this esophagus. I'm gonna use some scissors here and I'm gonna cut it off. And one of the things you'll notice is it's connected by connective tissue. It's almost like cling film here. If you look at it, it's very thin. And it's one of the things, lots, obviously in your thorax, you've got lots of organs there together and you don't, including your heart, you don't want them rubbing against each other. So what the connective tissue does is it just um, aids the slippy slidey nature of the organs next to each other every time you move. Okay, one of the things that you can do, obviously these are the lungs when they're uninflated, they still have bits of air left in them, but when you in inhale air, they go to quite a size. Now what I'm gonna do with this whole set is I'm gonna take a bicycle pump, I'm gonna shove it in the end and make as best connection as I can. And I've got my glamorous assistant here, Dr. Mike, who's gonna pump this bicycle pump as hard as he can and we'll just see what happens with these lungs. Okay, Dr. Mike, over to you, fast and furious. Oh, lovely. You, you can see them inflating straight away and becoming really quite large and they take on a very different appearance. Obviously the lungs are really, really red because they've got a rich blood supply and without that um, rich blood supply, because it's spread over a larger area when we're putting um, air into the lungs, it takes on a much paler appearance. Okay, so that's breathing in and breathe out. You can see how they that would uh, represent exhaling, and I can push all of that air out, and in a minute or two, it will return to completely normal. Okay, so what are you going to do? The first thing you're gonna do is orientate the lungs so that the trachea is facing you. And again, have a little look down there, stick your finger down, each bronchi. You'll see that they're actually really quite wide, and they're also supported by rings of cartilage. They're held open to prevent uh, impeding the passage of air. You're gonna take some scissors and you're gonna cut down through the uncartilage bit and you're gonna follow all the way down and that opens that up. Then what I want you to do is to continue following the tubes. You're gonna keep going and keep going and as you open that up, you're gonna see a lot more tubes. Now I want you to follow one tube, here's one here, and you're going to follow that and it opens to another one and you open that and it follows to another one and as you go you see they get smaller and smaller and smaller. Now it's these ones that are a little bit beyond the bronchi and the bronchioles that are the ones that contract when people have asthma attacks. The size of the air passage gets smaller and that's why people start gasping for air. Even when I'm cutting here, I can feel 
an element of cartilage. So it's it's held that the tubes are held open quite a long way through the lungs by cartilage. So we'll cut through and cut through. Here's a nice big one taking me all the way through. And I can feel their spongy nature already. In fact, if I remove a whole section of this lung, you can still see some of the holes here. Look at this one. If I remove a whole section of this lung, there's still air in there. If I pop that inside the water and give it a squeeze, you can see the bubbles of air coming out. And that was the little lamb's last breath. So one of the things you'll notice here is all this foamy stuff. And what that actually is, you hear us talk about mucus all the time. And this foamy stuff is the mucus. It's made by the lining of the trachea here, and it's made by goblet cells. And the idea is every time you breathe in, uh, you're taking in um, allergens, you're taking in dust, you're taking in bacteria, microorganisms. And what happens is they, they stick to that mucus. And um, the cilia cells, which of course we can't see, will waft that mucus up to the throat. Where you swallow it, it goes down to your stomach and um, you digest it. So it gets recycled, really. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is just to have a little play, I'm going to see, I'm taking the bottom end of the lungs now, but I'm going to see with this syringe, if I poke the uh, one in there and give it a squeeze, what will happen? Okay, so will this work? I haven't tried this before, but let's see. Oh, I can feel the air going in there, but it's not quite as effective. Perhaps some, that's something you could have a little play around with and see if you can get your lungs to inflate. You can even try it from this. And again, if I give this a squeeze, you can see bits of mucus coming out. It's very, very moist in there. Here's one, let me stick it in there and see. Hang on. No, I think that takes a little bit of further exploration uh, by you. I just wanted to show you this bit. Here's the trachea coming down, the bronchi, which I've cut. If I sealed those back up, that would be the bronchi there. And then as I've cut further and further along the bronchi, you can see the tubes lead to smaller tubes and smaller tubes and smaller tubes until they get to the alveoli, which of course we can't see because the walls of the alveoli are one cell thick. We can feel them when we squeeze because they've still got bits of air in there.